The theme of my movie is duty. I have two different characters from two different perspectives. One is a male and one is a female. During the war, they will have very different responsibilities. In order to be able to fight in the war, you had to be in the ages between 18 to 45. That is why I made my male character 25 years old. He felt that it was his duty and responsibility to fight in the war because he was eligible. He wanted to defend his country and crown. He also wanted a different life than his everyday life, which was a farmer. I based this character off of primary evidence because there are so many quotes of different young people being very excited to go fight in the war and defend their country and king. My female character is a character who is very strong and brave. She thinks that women should be able to have a job other than a housewife, and she has a strong opinion of what women should be allowed to do. She also strongly believes that women should be allowed to vote. She doesn't want her husband to go off and fight in the war, and she is concerned for her safety, but when the husband decides to go off and fight, she is supportive. This is based off of primary evidence, such as pictures and flyers, of when women had to take over the jobs while the men fought in the war. Both of my characters are from British descent, so neither one of them had to go and work in a camp. This movie takes place in many different locations. For the male character, it takes place in Europe where he sails overseas to fight in the war, as well as his home, Vancouver, Canada. For the wife, it only takes place on the farm and their house in Vancouver, Canada. The man did his training and preparations for the war on Hastings Street in Vancouver, Canada. His first battle that he fights in takes place in Ypres and in the trenches. His second battle takes place in Bimmy Ridge in the trenches as well. For the wife, her story takes place on the her farm in Vancouver, Canada, which later she will fully take over. The battlefields where the man fights is significant because that is what forever changed Canada's history. The farm is significant because that is where she changed the lives of women for generations to come. My movie starts off in 1914, where the man and woman have just recently gotten married and have a normal life. The man is a farmer and the woman is a housewife. Across the seas, there is an underlying argument that has been going on for quite some time now. It is between Germany and Britain. Germany is wanting to expand and get more land, while Britain is keeping them in Europe. Another big dispute that has been going on for a long time is that Bosnia is trying to gain independence from Austria. The Balkans think that the country should be represented by culture, so the Balkans are supportive from Bosnia gaining independence from Austria. All over the world, there have been many different alliances that are causing overlap and now is creating an issue. The world is going through a time where there are many different arguments. Later on, a Serbian terrorist group assassinates a member of the Austrian throne, Franz Ferdinand. This news is spread worldwide through the newspaper, even all the way to Vancouver, Canada. This is where the man reads about it. Austria later declares war on Serbia, and because of all the alliances that have been formed in the past, this becomes a worldwide issue. The man from the farm finds all of this very interesting and follows it very closely. Because of the alliances, Germany and Britain end up getting involved. Britain gives Germany an ultimatum. Britain tells Germany not to attack Belgium, but Germany doesn't listen. Britain later declares war on Germany. This then started to involve Canada because Canada was a part of the British Empire. The Prime Minister Robert Borden is confident that Canadian soldiers will step up and defend the king and country. This is when the man got excited to honor his king. He felt it was his duty to defend Canada, and leaving his everyday life on the farm was an exciting thing for him. He prepared as a soldier in Hastings Street, Vancouver, and later completed his training. He was ready for his first battle. His wife did not like the idea of him leaving and was scared for his safety, but she was supportive and excited to take over the farm. The man sailed overseas to fight in his first battle, the Battle of Ypres. He was a soldier who fought on land in the trenches. Looking over the edge of the trench and looking into no man's land was something that scared him. The man is armed with a machine gun. He starts to get really worried when he hears that the Germans have killed so many French with the mysterious green gas. They were not prepared to defend against this. Luckily, the Germans did not have enough gas to take the British and Canadian troops down. 
This is when he finds his new experience shocking, because he was not prepared for this. He misses his wife and hopes to return alive to see her again. This is based off of the primary letters from a letter written by William John Howe. Back at home in Vancouver, Canada, the woman is receiving the letters from her husband and missing him a lot. Also, her best friend has been recruited to be one of the nurses for the World War. The woman spends her day on the farm and is really enjoying having control over something. She begins to wonder why she hasn't been doing this the whole time. She wonders why she has never gotten the chance or opportunity to be in charge of something like this before. The next battle that the man fought in was the Battle of the Knee Ridge. The man is much more nervous about going into this battle than he was his first one. He was emotionally traumatized from his first battle when he fought in the Battle of Ypres. He saw terrible things in his first battle, things that he didn't mention in his letters back to his wife. He doesn't think of himself the same and never thought that he would be capable of killing people. This is based on the primary evidence of the poem called Back. He is fighting in the trenches again. In the trenches, you have to be alert all the time, day and night, because you never know who might attack. The man had to stay in the trenches for five days. While he was in the trenches, he talked with another one of the soldiers there. Although it was hard to hear with all the gunshots, they figured out a way to communicate by reading lips and talking with their hands. On his last day of fighting in Vindy Ridge, he discovered that he had gotten trench foot. He then had to get it amputated. This primary evidence shows that trench foot is a common thing. He wrote another letter to his wife explaining that he spends his days in the zigzag trenches and that the weather is very cold and harsh. He explained that sometimes he even had frost on his uniform. This is based off of primary evidence of a quote by NCO Clifford Lane. This was a big win for the man who fought in the battle. This was the first clear win and the first win for the Triple Entente. It was fought by mostly Canadians. The man was proud, but he was still shocked at what he was capable and able to do to other soldiers. Meanwhile, the woman at home has been running the farm and is beginning to wonder what will happen when the men return home from war. She doesn't want to go back to just being a housewife. She feels like she has proved that she is capable of doing what her husband had been doing before he left for war. She began protesting for women's rights. This is shown in many different photos of primary evidence. Because women proved that they had been able to handle the things that the men used to do, they were soon federally allowed to vote. Later, when the man returned home, he was very happy to see his wife. He shares with her how he defended his king and country and how he completed his duty. His wife shares with him how she took care of the farm and forever changed the lives of women. Because the war is going on longer than what was expected, they are running low on soldiers. The man doesn't like the slackers that aren't going off to fight. There's lots of primary evidence of people calling slackers cowards. Because of this man's amputated foot, he is not allowed to go back to fight in the war. His wife is happy about this, but he is not and wishes that he could still honor his king and country. The man criticizes many different farmers from Ontario. The man is not happy with Quebec because Quebec doesn't want to fight because they are not associated with the British. When Borden holds an election, the man is very happy with the result. His wife helped encourage women to vote in this election, although only certain types of women were allowed to vote. Both the man and the woman were very happy when the war came to an end. They were grateful that the man came back healthy. They continued to live their lives happily ever after.